groups like this, oh, I believed. I believed in. Hey, listen! White... I'm here to warn people. You keep telling me to shut up. This isn't a game. Okay, our government in the U.S. is building FEMA camps. We have an NDAA where they disappear people now. You have this arrest for public safety, life in prison. You are the worst person I've ever interviewed. No, no, it's basically off it. with their heads, disappear them, thank take you them for away. Being with us. Infowars.com. Half Liberty past eleven. Is You're watching the Liberty Sunday politics. We have an idiot freedom in the program will not today. Stop. You Coming will not stop in just freedom. Twenty minutes. You will not stop the republic. Humanity is awakening. Infowars.com. No. You guys are crazy. I'll be looking at the, the week ahead with our political stupid. panel. You're Until crazy. then, the Think Sunday the politics across know. the You're UK. Crazy. Question number two, $20,500,000. Question number three, $20,500,000. This question is addressed to my jury. Is this your verdict? So say each and all of you. Yes, Thank you very much. Uh, would the attorneys like to examine the verdict? No, you aren't. No, you All right. Um, Welcome back to the podcast, guys. Hope you're all doing well out there. So what you just saw was the judge in Alex Jones's defamation cost trial reading out the determinations of the jury when it comes to the determination of punitive damages in Alex Jones's cost trial. Yesterday, you guys will remember that they gave uh, the plaintiffs here, Mr. Heslin and Miss Lewis, $4.1 million in compensatory damages. Uh, for that phase, for the first phase and second phase was punitive damages, and they were awarded for around 40, 45 million dollars. OK, that was the exact opposite of what the uh, the defense asked for. They asked for something like two hundred thousand dollars. That's what the uh, defense attorney said this morning in closing arguments uh, for the punitive phase. Now, it's still not as much as the plaintiffs were asking for. They were asking for one hundred and fifty million in total. Uh, in total damages, but they ended up getting 50 million. It's not a bad uh, outcome. And as I pr predicted yesterday, uh, I said that the punitive damages will be much higher than the compensatories. And that's exactly my my hypothesis is that the punitive damages will be higher because because I think most of the jurors were still angry at Alex for doing what he did. Although they they some of them thought that he was part of free speech, but they still thought it was messed up to go after the families. That's so that's what I said yesterday, and that's basically what happened. It's not that hard to predict. If you uh, watch the entire trial, you know that um, that the jury questions that were asked from the witnesses suggest that almost all the jurors, and it's it's a unanimous decision, so all the jurors felt what Alex Jones did was wrong. So overall, in the end, they all came out to settle on the family side. They didn't give them what they asked for, but they gave them a very high amount. $50 million is nothing to sneeze at. Again, a lot of good can be done with that money, and uh, she will do that. Miss uh, Miss Lewis will use it to do something positive in the world. I have no doubt about that. They're good people. But I want you guys to listen to part of the argument that was made by the plaintiff's lawyer this morning. Very strong argument. And and uh, he just blew off uh, Alex Jones' side's face with this argument because it's so true. I want to take you back to something I said the first time we talked today. And that is, I believe that Alex Jones will not change, that Alex Jones will not be taught a lesson. And Alex Jones does not care. And what I just heard this man say and everything that came out of his mouth I am now further convinced that is exactly what we are dealing with. He says we have changed. Think about it. We saw on that stand an evidence that came in while during this trial of a judge on fire, allegations that a jury was being manipulated allegations that the jury didn't know what they were doing. We've heard that there's some great conspiracy theory that Neil and Scarlett are being used by the dark forces. 
I mean, seriously, think about it. Like, we're in it right now. We are in this reality that he tries to come up with. It blows my mind that we sit and argue about this conspiracy theory that Alex Jones came up with that their son didn't die. And then he comes in here and says, it happened. It absolutely happened. But it happened and we're now currently inside another conspiracy theory. I mean, the irony there, the hypocrisy is so thick I can cut it with a knife, a butter knife. They haven't changed. They won't change. That man will sit here and spew his lies and misinformation as long as he keeps getting a check. Because that's what Alex Jones does. He cares about his money. He cares about getting his money. And he pays people to ensure that he can continue that in perpetuity. I mean, the text message says the video of a medical student training to intubate makes us look ridiculous, suggesting this means COVID is fake. Sandy Hook all over again. What I care about in this is the person that responded to it. And that was Alex Jones. And what did he say? I get it. I.e., yeah, yeah, I understand. This absolutely is Sandy Hook all over again. This absolutely is stupid and ridiculous. But I think you heard the article is on InfoWars live right now. I mean, he, a, a year and a half ago, or I guess, I guess a little more than two years ago, the man is literally telling everyone that COVID is fake and he knows he's lying. He's not going to stop. They won't stop unless you stop them. So what you saw there was a taste of what uh, the plaintiff's lawyer had to say. And you guys can guess what the other side had to say. They downplayed the culpability of Alex and Infowars, uh, kept saying that there's no evidence that uh, Alex had malcontent. Alex apologized multiple times. Alex has learned his lesson and that the damages, there weren't any real damages done to the plaintiffs by Alex Jones. Other people did it, all the while ignoring the fact it was Alex Jones and Infowars that gave a platform to those lunatic conspiracy theorists, right? Helbig, Casey, Fetzer, all those people. He's the one who did it. He's the one who popularized them. And once you put that conspiracy theory out there, it just spreads, okay? I never truly appreciated how virulent and harmful these ideas are, right? Because unfortunately, a lot of people in the world do not know how to use logical thinking and rational uh examination of what they hear a lot of people see uh, tend to hear things and if they like the guy and the demeanor that he presents it with they choose to believe it this is unfortunately the world we live in and that's a failure of our education system we don't teach kids how to think rationally use critical thinking enough i learned i had to go to college to learn that stuff most people don't go to college so they don't really learn it in high school they don't understand how to evaluate an idea ask for evidence before believing it and use critical thinking recognize logical fallacies which is what Alex Jones does every day, okay? Using one thing to try to discredit the US government, or two things, three things. Operation Gladio happened in 1956. And Gulf of Tonkin, which he also brings up, that happened back in 1964. Decades and decades ago, yeah. Alex Jones refuses to use the same logic that he uses when he talks about how it's wrong for people to take away guns because a crazy person shoots up a place. He does not use that same logic with the US government. It's wrong to blame the entire U.S. government, which consists probably more than a million workers, way more than that if you put everybody together. You're going to indict the entire U.S. government because the CIA was involved in Operation Gladio, Gulf of Tonkin, also in the 60s, before the uh, Vietnamese War. And only a few people who were involved in that. It wasn't like the entire government uh, was colluding, and it wasn't even the entire DOD who was colluding, okay? It was a couple of people up high who planned these things. That's how it always happens. There is no wide conspiracy within the entire government. 
So to blame people, good people who work for the U.S. government, the federal government, who keeps us safe every day and provides us with everything we need. Yes, we also work, but they keep us safe. That's a fact. Okay, a lot of people take the U.S. government for granted. They attack it every single day. All these anti-establishment freaks who want to destroy America and to destroy the American people's trust in America, which is a very, which is a treasonous act, in my opinion. And and unfortunately, I used to engage in this because I used to listen to these monkeys who claim to be anti-establishment, like Jimmy Dore and uh, Breaking Points, Crystal and Sagar. All these people, they're trying to destroy America by destroying the trust that the American people have in the federal government. Okay, it's a shameful act. 99% of what the government does is good and it helps us. And the 1%, it's not even 1%, it's less than 1%, but let's just say that for, for sake of argument. I don't want to go into percentages here, but a vast, the vast majority of government action is good. There's a tiny amount of government action that is questionable or lies, like with the CIA. And it's not, it's not for nefarious evil reasons because the CIA thought that they were doing the right thing. Of course, they weren't. They were wrong about that. But they didn't have malintent to hurt Americans. Okay, They were trying to uh, do uh, overthrow governments because they thought that the leader they were bringing in was a good, better guy for that country and for us. They just turned out to be wrong about that. <laughs> okay, Their uh, coups that they orchestrated in South America and Central America, the Middle East, went badly. Because you can't, no matter how, how smart they think they are, it doesn't work out the way you think. There's so many factors going on in these countries that you cannot predict what's going to happen. So the CIA is dumb for sure, but they're not evil. I used to blame the CIA and call them evil, but I've come to the conclusion that that's not correct. Because if you actually, if you put away the uh, anger and the hyperbole and you actually look at the operations, they were trying to fix things in their opinion for the better. They failed, that's true, and ended up badly, which is why I don't want the CIA to even exist because they don't we're not ne they're not necessary. We don't need civilian oversight over these things. We have Air Force intelligence, Navy intelligence, Army intelligence, we have military intelligence that can take care of uh national security. And if we need to do operations in other countries, the military is perfectly capable of doing that. I don't we don't need the CIA. I don't I I personally I don't think that they're very effective and I I wouldn't mind them being revoked as an agency. So I'm not trying to defend the CIA here. I'm just saying that the evil attribution is incorrect. They're not doing it because they're evil. They're doing it because they thought wrongly that they can fix the world. And, and disgusting people like Alex Jones uses that and paints it as nefarious, paints it as people who hate America, who want to destroy the regular person. That's how he paints the federal government, when it's the exact opposite. Most people who work for the federal government are regular people. They're civil servants who love America and trying to do the best they can. That's the real truth. And people like Alex Jones are the enemy. They are the enemy of regular Americans, okay? Because all he's trying to do every day on his show is to discredit America and try to destroy the U.S. government. It's a shame and a disgusting thing to do. So with all that being said, the last thing I got to say here is I'm glad that the uh, the parents here got a hefty number from Alex Jones. I wish it was higher, but uh, uh, $49.3 million is nothing to uh, sneeze at. That's the total it comes out to. With yesterday's convinced stories and today's uh, punitive damages, that's what it comes to. Okay, So I think that's a good development. And uh, hopefully we can get more from him in Connecticut and completely bankrupt him because that that way America will be just a little safer from the domestic terrorists who are trying to destroy it. And that's what that's what Alex Jones is. He's a domestic terrorist, along with the Proud Boys and the Three Percenters and the Wolverine Men and the rest of the, the rest of the clowns who tried to attack the Capitol on January 6th. These people are dangerous and they need to be and they need to have their defamatory and criminal voices taken away from them. OK, because. If they don't, they're going to keep pushing this, keep pushing the envelope, keep lying about people, keep demonizing the government to the point we're going to lead to a civil war. And that's what Alex Jones wants. He's always talking about 1776 happening again because he wants to destroy America and rebuild it in his authoritarian, Christian, fascist way. And we cannot let that happen. And what Lauren Boebert and Alex Jones and Marjorie Taylor Greene do not, they want a fascist Christian state. And we cannot let that happen. Okay. So very happy about the outcome, hoping to see more money taken away from him in Connecticut, and I'll be covering that trial as well. With that being said, see you guys next time. As always, peace. You did it. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. You're safe now. Anderson, step away. Dread, what the drock are you doing? Joe wasn't aiming at the Blitzer anymore. Dread's lawgiver was pointing at the boy. You're in my line of fire. You're going to kill him? He needs time to gather his strength after each psionic blast. This might be the only chance we get. 
He's just a child. He's a weapon. You know it as well as I do. If he lives, the other mega cities will never stop searching for him. No. The chief judge leaned on the Texans, found out what they knew. Seems that the destruction in Luxor City was caused by him. Hundreds of people were killed. I didn't want to believe it, but Dredd had never lied to me. He isn't Owen Chrysler, Dredd. He's not evil. He just needs control. And I can help him. No. The risk is too great. Selecting incendiary round. You're going to shoot an unarmed child? You think I want to do this? I have to. For the safety of my city. Now get out of my way. You know I won't, Joe. You're gonna kill me too? Or will you trust me? We're judges, Joe. We're the law. And the law does not turn a blind eye to the blameless, the innocent. You know that better than any of us. This child needs a guardian. He needs protection. And that's... And that's... what we do. He put away his gun and threw me a nod. You realize this is on you now? If you develop an emotional attachment to the boy... I'll take him to Psy Division. Put him in the mentoring program. Accelerated Academy curriculum. He'll be my responsibility. I'll back you up. But you'd better be ready. For what? In case you're wrong. 